in the Middle Ages they had three different classes of musicians with the Musica Practica or Practicus. It's people playing instruments. It's the practical dimension of playing. It's, it's what we're doing tonight. And then Music Theoria, Music Theorist is uh, the person who understands not just the mechanics of the instruments but the mechanics of harmony and why compositional form is a certain way and knows how to teach that and to, to adapt it to music practica and the part that we're missing completely which is called mus musica speculativa which is really the philosophical dimension of music. A person doesn't even have to know how to play music or even know music theory to be able to engage in this speculative music of speculative music you know take the musician first and how they tune their instrument and say why why do they tune their instrument this way there's two different ways you can go with that and say you know music should be this way and you teach the theorists and the musicians to do it this way because that's the, the right and harmonic way or you look at it and say these musicians are doing something that even they don't understand. Why? And what is the what, is, what are the properties that are that are going on here? I think so. To me, music is very big. It's very big, and, and also music is the place where the the, the disciplines of space and number uh, and moving bodies, and also the question of what a human being's relationship to all of those things are. Those, that's a huge answer for what is music, but I can't, I can't go smaller than that. different experience than composing music or recording music you know that which you know I do all of those things too and I think I get something very different out of composing music than actually playing playing it playing music it's the camaraderie within the band it's a it's a form of communication between musicians that um, there's a lot of space for that in secret chiefs so I feel gratified that you know I've written some music that other people can participate in, you know, they can actually contribute. And besides, it's, uh, it becomes more and more of a, uh, a pleasure to be able to share that with audiences who understand what we're doing. I really get the feeling recently that, that people really are, are tuned in to what we're doing in the audience, which is really a great feeling. There have been times in this band where people are looking at you and, you know, yeah. it's a strange, it, it's nice to overcome that and actually be feeling like we really are connecting with audiences, really cool. I am seeking to, to share with people, um, at least in some of the music that we do, that um, instead of just doing something avant-garde and thinking that that's new all the time, that the only way to go is into uh, deconstruction or something, I really like the opposite. And with this band, I, I feel like we're sharing with listeners the fact that simple diatonic seven note music uh, can can be more you know engaging it can seem very very uh, advanced when in fact it's very simple and uh, I think that people can relate to it very easily but it's it's not really necessarily familiar so there's sort of a magic that happens in stepping outside of the of the familiar but for us it's not unfamiliar so much for us, it's certainly. I mean, I don't look at it as avant-garde music. It's for for for, uh, for me, it's very fundamental. Returning to really ancient tonal principles that are forgotten. So, 
I, I like to reintroduce that and sort of celebrate with people that this is a this is a magic that's just waiting for us to, to be tapped, tapped into. are strange. I actually started on the trumpet. It was my first instrument. Even now, like I, I can't really play because you have to have, be in practice with your lip. But if I have the lip, I, if you put music in front of me, I can read very well. I can play. But if you don't, if you take the music away and say play the trumpet, I can't. It's terrible. It's terrible. If you put a guitar in my hand, put music sheet music in front of me, and tell me to read it. I can't. You take the music away, I can play. It's just, you know, completely different sides of the brain involved in the two different instruments. So I learned that very early that, you know, uh, every instrument is very different. Um, so for writing music, I'm usually, maybe half the time, I'm doing some kind of a keyboard. Or uh, with the saws, of course. With the saws playing lyrically, like uh, actually s like singing, I'm most comfortable on, on this instrument, playing melodic lines. But for composing, it's uh, I'm more comfortable on a keyboard. And guitar is just for making you know guitar music. If I could just magically be able to play an instrument and be able to play it well, uh, I would choose the duduk. I think that, that I mean most people would say that. Anyone who's heard the duduk is going to recognize something. You know, and, uh, and wish that they could do that. Chiefs is, is divided into seven different bands, and so each each of these bands is a is like a filter, um, or like you know with a prism. If light is coming into it, and light is the creative force, then it's coming out in many different colors. So each band, you know, there's a red band, a green band, a yellow band. So the one of the bands specializes in film music. Whether, they're actually, whether it's actually playing film music or playing music that sounds like it's from film music. That's, that's in a way the aesthetic behind that band. Um, but the other bands are not doing that. For example, the Ashrakian band doesn't do anything related to film, to film music. So they're, they're in pretty distinct categories. 
the seven bands is is associated with you know very traditional arrangement of seven you know seven planets and you know the, the days of our week are named after these planets you know it's not it's not necessarily like this pagan hermetic thing it's everywhere our daily life is 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 set to the to the clock of this seven septenary system so that that's given me a lot of uh, opportunity to organize my own creative process according to those very traditional things. So I'm, I'm sort of synchronizing some of my creative energies to, to this kind of a clock. And uh, so band, the idea of, of turning these things into bands just kind of naturally grew out of, I guess what's, you know, a creative chaos that's coming out. You try to organize it, you're trying to make it into something presentable. It occurred to me that this is a for me, definitely the best way to harmonize all of these different uh, impulses.